I mean, cannot thank you enough, O Lord, for all your love before the foundation of the world. Lord, we can not even understand or grasp the amount of love you have for all of us and every one of us. Lord, help us to realize who we are and find ourselves in you and hear your voice in our hearts guiding us to the true unity in you. Lord, we cannot thank you if we praise you for eternity. It's not enough. Please, we ask you to bless this meeting. Talk in our hearts and open our eyes that we realize that we are in heaven and that is our habitation, our Father who art in heaven. Uh, thanks to Abuna Aaron for uh, inviting me to take your blessing. It's a blessing to talk uh, to the wonderful uh, servants of uh, St. Mary's Orlando. May God bless you all and uh, uh, give you the joy of his resurrection, not for 50 days, but for, for eternity. Uh, 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 the, the, the talk I want to I wanna share with you today is about <clears throat> uh, St. Paul, the one who experienced resurrection. Because uh, resurrection is ours. And this is what St. Paul realized and he cannot find a single talk of Paul without uh, hinting or pointing to the resurrection of Christ. He was living the resurrection. So we wanna just uh, take his footsteps and, and trace his path how did he arrive at this? And why was it that he was so strong about the resurrection with Christ? So for this, if you can uh, please uh, pick up your Bible and let's uh, open uh, Acts 9, Acts 9. It is a famous story of him on the way to Damascus. On the way to Damascus. Because this is how it started. This is how it started. You all know the story, how he was on his way to Damascus, uh, not for a good reason, but for uh, an evil reason to uh, persecute, uh, for, for more persecution of Christians. And he was authorized, as you know, and uh, somehow the Lord had a plan for this vessel. Totally unexpected, totally unexpected. That's why the first point in order to experience our resurrection in Christ is to realize how much I'm being loved. How much I'm being loved. Because some of us are still at the point of 
Oh, how many sins do I carry? Am I forgiven or not? But his love to us is way beyond this point, way beyond this point. He see in every one of us his image. He sees in every one of us the value of his own life for which he shed the blood on the cross. Anyway, let's, let's read together. In, uh, in verse 3, Acts 9, 3, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. And the Bible maybe is, is using those expressions to show the contrast between his darkness and the light of Christ. His darkness and the light of Christ. But this light was different. It, uh, it blinded him. It was the uncreated light, the uncreated light of God, the glory of God, the glory of God shone on him, around him, as uh, one of the fathers was going back to the Greek uh, words, and it says that uh, the words in Greek give the sense of being surrounded by light. He found himself as the center of a circle of unbearable light. He couldn't resist. So this is how the Lord appeared to him. So he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? And I guess this is how it started. I guess this is how it started. A person as knowledgeable as Paul, he realized the meaning of the words. It means that when I'm persecuting his followers, I'm persecuting him. He realized that there is a link between Christ and Christians. It's not a theory, it's not a law, it's not a people following a person. No, it is him in them and them in him. And this is what made uh, St. Paul later in his epistles mention the word in Christ 174 times in his epistles. 174 times in his epistles and especially in the epistle to the Ephesians. Why? Because this is his experience and this is the experience of resurrection in the life of Paul. Uh, next, let's uh, go to Galatians 1. Galatians chapter 1. In Galatians 1, another reflection of how Paul saw himself in Christ. In Galatians 1, let's uh, go to verse 12. Uh, let's go verse 11. Galatians 1, 11. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel 
which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we realize here that Paul, when he met with the Lord in Damascus, on the way to Damascus, he started a relationship with the Lord, where the Lord was revealing to Paul the secrets, the secrets of his relationship with man, the secrets with the, of, of the relationship of Christ with all humans, as we can tell from the words of St. Paul later. So what he is preaching is not from man, it's from Christ. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. That's who I am. And this gives hope to every one of us. Even if, if, if I'm Paul, he still loves me. Paul b before, I mean, Saul. He still loves me. He has a plan for me. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But listen to this in 15. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. So here, this is the inner feeling of Paul. When he got in contact with the Lord, he realized his position in the heart of God. His position in the mind of God that uh, he separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, not through uh, uh, any any good job, any good work that I deserve to be called. No, through his grace, through his grace. But the point here, he separated me from my mother's womb. If we just, everyone, just take this personal, that he separates me from my mother's womb for a certain role. And he is revealing this role day after day in my life. That I be a, a, an instrument in his hands. Uh, Let's move to chapter 2, Galatians 2. Another peak in the heart of Paul when he starts to get in contact with Christ, when he starts to, to realize his position in his heart, and now he is realizing the meaning of the Lord's salvation to him. Because no one can serve without realizing who I am in Christ. Otherwise, it's going to be just words, just knowledge, 
even an atheist can can do that. But the difference between Son of God serving his brethren is when I find myself in Christ. And this is clear in verse 20, the famous verse you all know, but I want you to, to re-look at it from this perspective today. The personal uh, experience of Paul. I have been crucified with Christ. So the more he understood the mystery of the salvation, he realized that crucifixion was not a history. No, um, I, I was there. In the humanity of Christ, he was carrying all humans. So his death was mine. And this, how I need to be looking at the salvation of Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And this is uh, the word uh, uh, I told you, in Christ, everything in Christ. So he, this is his mind day after day. Me, me no more, Christ in me. Me no more, Christ in me. And this is what Christ said when he said, if you want to follow me, the condition is to deny yourself. Deny myself is not just saying, no, deny yourself is when you, deep, deep inside, you realize that I'm no more. It's Christ in me. It's Christ in me. As, as he also mentioned in another place, that we are created in Christ. Created, this is the new creation. To create it in Christ for good works, he uh, prepared for us to go through or to live through. It's, uh, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. Meaning, I don't see him, but I believe. who loved me and gave himself for me, personally. Next is Philippians 3. Philippians 3. All this, I'm, try, I'm trying to take you in, in a journey to understand resurrection in the life of Paul to be a model for us to go on the same steps as servants of Christ. In, in Philippians 3, he's talking how he has all the potentials to, uh, to, to boast as a Jew. But in verse 7, he realized, you know, it's the same as uh, Jesus said, uh, a person found the treasure and he went and uh, sold everything to, uh, to acquire the, the treasure. Uh, he, he's doing the same here. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Whatever was a gain, I counted loss for Christ. I'm ready to give it up. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He wants to uh, free his mind of everything, just Christ, and everything through 
Christ and every glory back to Christ. Christ is a sinner. That's the resurrection of our life in our lives. In verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. No righteousness. What righteousness? It's all Christ's which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And here he stated his knowledge of the resurrection, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. So when I put Christ the center, now I can relate much to his resurrection. It's mine. I feel it. I live it. My suffering is his cross. And even my death is his. Even my death is his. Next is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is back to the experience in Acts 9 on the way to Damascus. In verse 6, 2 Corinthians. 4, 6. It says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And I guess this is his own experience, that he was in darkness, and all of a sudden, the, the light he saw, it wasn't just an outside experience, it, it even came inside, within him, in his heart, it gives light to the, uh, shown in our hearts, shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the light he had in, in, inside him, which was growing day after day with the more he experienced the life with Christ. But listen to his experience. If we continue in this part, it explains a lot about the life of Paul, how he lived it in Christ. Maybe someone would look at it and say, well, what you're saying is heaven. Okay, for sure the one who can experience this will have a glorious life. But... We have this treasure in earthen vessels. What are earthen vessels? Earthen vessels are very weak. God gives us this light, this resurrection, this value within us, but he keeps the vessel as an earthen vessel. It suffers. It's a suffering vessel. Yes, there is glory inside, but the vessel is weak. And this is what we all suffer. Oh, if it's just for my body, my flesh, my thoughts, my the temptations, whatever going, going on around us. That's part of the equation, but make sure that the treasure inside 
is there. So he's saying that the, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And then the, the part, you know, we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed because we have the glory within us. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. And here in 10, it's a, the daily experience of Paul. Ca always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Christ. What is the dying of the Lord Christ? Suffering for the beloved ones. Suffering for the beloved ones. So every day, he is welcoming suffering as part of the cross. Suffering for the church, suffering for the believer, suffering for the world, as part of the cross. As I told you, it's our cross, it's our resurrection. The, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our, in our body. Meaning, the more I welcome those pains, those mortifications, as they call them, the more I grow in the experience of resurrection where, where his life be manifested in my body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. And then we jump to verse 16, another golden verse. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Yes, we're talking resurrection, but for us to complete the resurrection of Christ in our lives, there are many things who need to change. Many things need to change. So the Lord allows outer suffering, outer suffering, the outward man is perishing. When I accept it thankfully, the inward man is renewed day by day. Renewed here meaning new mind, new understanding, new experience with Christ. I find myself more and more. Who am I? in his eyes. This is what renewed is. And this gives me more power, despite the weak outward man. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Last part I want to uh, share with you is the same epistle of 2 Corinthians, but chapter 12, uh, the part where he is talking about his experience when he saw heaven. In, in, in chapter 11, he talks about all the sufferings he's been through in his service. And now in, uh, in 12, he's talking about uh, this experience. It's doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, 
I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast. Anyway, he's talking about a wonderful spiritual experience when he saw heaven. And now you can look at Paul, wow, he is uh, living a glorious life. He even saw heaven. But then, in verse 7, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, the more you get, <laughs> the more the tolls. The more you experience, the more the tolls. I'm not scaring anyone, but uh, it's a battle. We need to understand. We need to understand. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, my, my grace sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. This is the experience. This is the experience of being weak and yet strong from within. God allows that we be as brittle, as weak, as uh, being tempted and as being uh, uh, suffering. And Paul himself asking for healing. And the answer is get, be satisfied with my grace. It's completed in your weakness. It's completed in your weakness. It made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is resurrection. This is resurrection. David the little standing in front of Goliath's and the power of David the little is much stronger than the power of Goliath. The grace is made perfect in weakness and so on. Just apply it to all examples. The grace is made perfect in weakness. And this how Christians are. And this how Christians are. Who, those who are in the resurrection of Christ. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then um, I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. This is his experience. This is resurrection in the life of Paul. With this in mind, what do you expect from St. Paul's talks and service and, uh, and uh, uh, everywhere in the world? You, you expect the power of Christ himself because he was abiding in Christ and abide and Christ in him and the grace of God was supporting his weakness. And this is what we are praying that we all experience. And that's why the church is giving us a period of 50 days, not to eat enough, but to 
experience the resurrection in my life, that I receive the Holy Spirit and start going out full of power, preaching the living God who is able to, to raise the dead and give them life. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.